That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. Now, today's Daily Dose of Stupid, Bernie Sanders has doubled down on defending his wealth. And for those of you who haven't been following the story, I'll just give you a, a brief little overview of what's been going on here. So there was a New York Times interview that was done with Bernie, and a reporter asked him about some criticism that he had been facing about his own wealth. And it's no surprise. I've been talking about this for a while. I know Andrew Wilkow loves to talk about it. Some other guys that are right here on News Radio 1440, Mark Levin, Ben Shapiro. And it's not just conservatives. There are a lot of liberals, even people that are fans of Bernie Sanders that have been talking about how it seems awful hypocritical for him to, every time he opens his mouth, talk about how evil rich people are, despite the fact that he owns three houses and lives a very lush, posh lifestyle. That does seem like an inconsistency, and the reason it seems that way is because it is an inconsistency. And so because of this, the reporter that was that was interviewing him for the New York Times was actually doing his job and decided to ask a tough question and ask him about his wealth and, and everything that he's amassed and everything that he's been able to acquire from a material standpoint. And Bernie responded with this. I wrote a best-selling book. If you write a best-selling book, you can be a millionaire too. So that was Bernie Sanders' answer. But hang on a second. If I write a best-selling book, I can be a millionaire too? I thought the system was rigged. That's what you keep telling us, that the system is rigged against poor people and that it's these evil one percenters that are keeping everybody else from amassing any wealth. Well, if that's true, then how did you get wealthy? I mean, it's not like you <laughs> started out as part of the 1%. I mean, Bernie Sanders wasn't exactly born with a silver spoon in his mouth. He wasn't born super poor either. But this isn't a guy who was, you know, the son of a big oil tycoon or anything like that. And so the question then becomes, okay, well, well, how did Bernie Sanders make all his money in the first place? How did he get wealthy? And the answer to that is he wrote a best-selling book. And he's saying that if you write a best-selling book, you can be a millionaire too. But if the system's rigged against you, then, then that shouldn't be able to take place. He keeps talking about how there's no upward mobility and, and the classes are set. And if you're rich, you're going to be rich your whole life. And if you're poor, you're going to be poor your whole life. And there's no way to move up in the system. That doesn't make any sense just by looking at Bernie Sanders' own lifestyle. He is a living, breathing proof that you can rise above your circumstances. Same was true with Barack Obama, who, again, wasn't born poor, but certainly wasn't born wealthy and yet became the president of the United States. You could look at somebody on the conservative side, Ben Carson. Now, he actually was dirt poor and wound up becoming a very wealthy and successful brain surgeon who now works, or, uh, works for uh, the Trump administration. So this whole myth that Bernie continues to perpetuate virtually every time he says anything is that you're all stuck in the system and the whole thing's rigged and it's it's worked against you and evil rich people are taking all your money and stealing from you and you can't get wealthy, you can't improve your own lifestyle without the benevolent government coming down and fixing everything for you. Except Bernie did all that without government help. And now you're looking down on people and saying, well, if you write a best-selling book, then you can be a millionaire. But you keep telling us that we can't, Bernie. You keep telling us that that's an impossibility. You keep telling us that nobody can move up out of their class, that the way that this evil capitalist system is rigged, that nobody can move up or move down or, or anything. And yet you're living, breathing proof that that is not true. And here's the thing. I don't have a problem with Bernie being wealthy. I don't. I don't have a problem with him having three houses. I don't have a problem with him having 20 houses. I really don't. If that's you know, what Bernie wants to do, that's his business. The reason that I have a problem with it and the reason that I bring it up is not because of the stuff itself. It's because he portrays himself as this warrior for the people. And yet, he doesn't live like the people. 
he's, he talks about working people and how hard they have it and everything and, and how it's evil that all these rich people are amassing all this stuff and they have too much and it's obscene and unjust for them to have their wealth. And then he has wealth too. He's a member of the 1% that he constantly says are bad people. And he constantly says we're screwing everybody else out of having money and out of having things. It doesn't make any sense. And so he gets frustrated with this and actually doubles down on it. There was a community meeting in Gary, Indiana that Bernie Sanders was speaking at. And he said, I didn't know that it was a crime to write a good book, which turns out to be a bestseller. So again, I don't apologize for writing a book that was number three on the New York Times bestseller translated into five or six languages, and that's that. So that's not even a humble brag. That's just a brag. In fact, it was very Trump-esque. You know how Trump will take a completely unrelated question and turn it into somehow bragging about himself and his accomplishments? That's exactly what Bernie just did. And Trump does it all the time. He'll be asked a question about, I don't know, uh, uh, farm subsidies in Iowa, and he'll talk about, you know, how rich he is and how he amassed a great real estate empire in New York. And you're just sitting there scratching your head like, I think he just went completely off topic just so we could talk about how rich he is and how well he's doing. That's exactly what Bernie Sanders just did. Uh, Bernie just is like, ah, well, if you write one that's number three on the New York Best Times and it's translated into these different languages, like, Bernie, we're, we're talking about your wealth. We're not talking about how successful your book was. But nonetheless... It does illustrate something, though, and that is Bernie is fine with criticizing wealth as long as it's everybody's wealth except for his. His wealth is the only wealth people aren't allowed to criticize. He gets flustered and frustrated and upset because he sees the contradiction himself. Even if he doesn't know that he sees it, I think subconsciously he understands that there is this massive contradiction that he's living out. And that's the reason that he gets so frustrated. And by the way, I'm using an article from CNN that was talking about how he was visually frustrated by this and how he got flustered by the question. So this isn't like Breitbart or The Blaze or Daily Wire saying this. This is CNN freaking in. And they're saying that Bernie Sanders gets upset about this and he gets upset when this topic of conversation is broken up. It's because he knows there's a level of cognitive dissonance in his mind about how he lives versus how he talks about how evil and, and bad rich people are and how people should take that money away and give it to others. He's fine with people doing that for other people. He's just not fine with them doing it to him. See, his wealth is fine. His wealth he earned. His wealth is the result of his hard work that he put into the book. Everybody else's wealth, well, they just stole that from people. That's just evil, nasty, dirty money that they took from other people and they exploited workers. Well, how do you know that? Are you really going to say that you know every single millionaire, every single rich person in the world is evil just because they have wealth and they must have screwed somebody else out of their money to be able to get it? Because that's what Bernie Sanders says all the time. And yet when it's his wealth, oh, that's clean money. That, I, I earned that. This is what's so hilarious about this. This is a dude that was a lazy freeloader his entire life, didn't have a real job until he was 40, and even then that job was a government job. He's never worked in the private sector. And this illustrates a problem that socialists have in general, people that are proponents of big government. They hate the free market, but they always leave at least a little bit of the free market for themselves. A perfect example of this is that Democrats, by and large, there are exceptions, I'm sure, but by and large, they tell people that it's wrong for them to not engage in the public school system and that you ought to be locked into the district that you're in, that you shouldn't have school choice. They oppose things like voucher programs. But where do their kids go to school? Private schools. Even a lot of the ones that specifically work in education and the Department of Education, their kids are still going to the ritzy private schools that are not beholden to their rules. See, it's kind of like a person that runs a restaurant, but that person that runs the restaurant is too good for that restaurant because they know that their restaurant sucks and so they don't eat there themselves. Never eat in a restaurant the owner would not eat in. 
because chances are it's either really terrible or dirty or something, but the point is there's something wrong with the way that organization is being run. And the thing is, the Democrats know that things like the education system are run horribly, and that's why their kids aren't going to it. See, they want to keep just enough of the free market for them to use, but not everybody else. Socialism is for the masses, the unwashed people, you little people out there in flyover country. It's not for the socialist. Bernie wants everybody else's money taken away, but not his. See, his money he earned, his money is his, and he built that. Everybody else's money, oh, well, screw them. They, they probably got it from taking it from somebody else or taking it from working people. See, there's a massive inconsistency here. And what's so hilarious about this is that when we're talking about other people's wealth, then all of a sudden Bernie is a socialist. But when we're talking about Bernie's wealth, well, all of a sudden he sounds like Ron Paul or Ted Cruz or Mike Lee or Thomas Sowell. Then all of a sudden he sounds like a capitalist because his wealth, that he doesn't really want to part with. And that's the massive inconsistency of him and, and of socialism in general. They want everybody's money taken away from them and redistributed to somebody else except their own. <laughs> Now, y'all know that I am a big believer in personal liberty, and that means I think that you should be free to decide for yourself whether or not you like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. However, I will say this. You know who else never subscribed to my channel? Hitler. So the way I see it, you have two options. You can either like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel, or you can be like Hitler. Totally up to you.